In this lesson, we're going to learn how to convert between radians and degrees. So up to this point, we've talked about angles both in radians and we've talked about angles in degrees. So typically, when you think about an angle, we measure it in degrees. But we talked about um, arc length, which is the SOAR formula. And in that situation, your angle has to be in radian mode. So it's important to be able to convert um, between radians and degrees because what happens if you're given an angle in degrees and you want to find the measure or the length of an arc and you need to use the SOAR formula, your angle has to be in radians. So you have to be able to convert between them. So the conversion is that there are pi radians in 180 degrees. So really what that means is pi radians so 3.14 repeating, or not repeating, but um, going on. So the entire number, pi, is equal to 180 degrees. So this is my conversion rule. So if I want to take and convert from 60 degrees to radians, I'm going to put the 180 degrees on the bottom when I multiply because I want to um, get rid of the degrees. If I wanted to go from radians to degrees, I'm going to put the radians or the pi on the bottom because when I multiply I want to make sure that the radians cancel. You could also set up a proportion but it's just a lot of extra steps that aren't necessary especially because these conversions are going to um, happen very often. So they are well-known conversions if you're trying to go from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. Um, here's kind of the shortcut for you. Um, the conversion is given to you on your reference sheet, so that should be helpful um, when you're trying to go from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. So let's go ahead and look at this example here. So I'm trying to convert 60 degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and write that to radians. So that means I need to cancel out the degrees, so I'm going to put the 180 degrees on the bottom and the pi radians on top, so that when I multiply these, the degrees will cancel um, and I'll have 60 pi over 180 degrees radians or not I shouldn't say 180 degrees 180 um, radians so this is my conversion 60 degrees is equal to 60 pi over 180 radians now we don't want to leave it like this we want to reduce it so if we put 60 over 180 in our calculator or just reduce it you end up with one third so you could say one third pi radians is one option or you could leave the pi in the numerator and just say pi over three radians so you should know that these two answers are equivalent. They mean exactly the same thing. It's just a matter of if you want to put the 1 in the numerator or just think of this as 1 times pi in the numerator. Um, so that's how you do it. So let's look at some more examples so you get comfortable with it. So 712 uh, pi radians, we want to convert it to degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just group that pi with the 7, remember, like I said, that's equivalent. These two are equivalent. This is saying 1 third times pi, but if you were to actually multiply those, the pi would go in the numerator. So if I write 7 pi over 12, these two things are equivalent. So I have 7 pi over 12 radians, and I want to make this um, into degrees. So that means I want to, this time, I want to make sure that I have my pi in the bottom because it's pi radians and 180 degrees on top. So what happens is the radians cancel and I have 7 pi times 180. Again, I'm going to leave all of these in terms of pi because typically what's going to happen with these is you're going to have to use these numbers in your formulas so you don't want them to be round in answers. So I'm getting 1260 pi over 12 pi and you're seeing that the pi's will cancel. I could have canceled them in that previous step if I would like. Um, and this is going to be degrees, because remember we're left with degrees here. So 1260 divided by 12 is giving me 105 degrees. So if you look at what I really did for both of these, see how when I went from degrees to radians, I just multiplied by pi over 180. If I'm going from radians two degrees, I'm switching that. I'm multiplying by the 180 over pi. 
So if you're ever questioning, well, which one do you multiply by? I always just think of it as what am I trying to cancel? That goes in the denominator. That's kind of the easy way to think of it. So if I look at the next one here, 160 degrees to radians. Well, I want to cancel the 160 degrees. So I'm going to divide by the 180 degrees. The pi radians will stay up top. So this ends up being 160 pi over 180 radians. And again, just reduce that fraction. 160 divided by 180, you get 8 over 9. So it's going to be 8 pi over 9 radians. You could also write this as 8 over 9 pi radians. These are mathematically equivalent. And this in-between step here, you don't need to show that. I'm just showing it to you so you know how I'm getting from here to the 8 pi over 9. Next one here, 300 degrees to radian measure. So again, I'm going to be multiplying by pi over 180. So pi radians over 180 degrees. The degrees will cancel. So here I'm just going to go ahead and do that right in my calculator. So 300 divided by 180 is what I'm typing in my calculator. I end up with 5 pi over 3. Again, I'm not putting pi into my calculator. I'm just kind of carrying it along this whole time. So 5 pi over 3, or you could say 5 thirds pi radians. Keep in mind that radians doesn't necessarily have to have pi in it. Um, it's just a lot of times it will, but it doesn't have anything to do with the actual radian itself. Um, it doesn't have to be in there. You've seen examples where you've had just like 1.5 radians or 2 radians. So don't feel like you always have to have pi in your answer when you're dealing with radians. Um, last one here. So we have pi over 4 radians. I'm trying to cancel out the radians. And I have the 180 degrees up top. So we can see that these are going to cancel. Those are both numerator, denominator, and then really what this ends up becoming is 180 divided by 4, so you get 45 degrees. And so when you deal with a fraction like this, I would just think of this is the numerator, this is the denominator, so the numerator in this fraction will cancel with the denominator in your second fraction. That's the easiest way. Instead of putting this over 1 again and getting a complex fraction, I would just use this. Um, so that's it. So write down your key ideas, use your conversions, um, and then do the check your understanding problems, and we will talk about those in class tomorrow.